He says, uh, one question I have for you for the 1 p.m. call is how to do something, uh, how do someone know what their calling is? A lot of our thoughts are shaped by ideas we have linked together growing up or by what we watch. This is correct. That's why we can't trust our thoughts. Uh, example, I may daydream at work about doing something else and being a boxer. Uh, this may be just a story I tell myself to get through the day rather than what my true purpose is. Any tips would be appreciated. So one of the things I like to say is that God speaks to us through revelation, right? And if you want to know what your, your call is, you, we can't get there. It's, it, it, we can't get there by logic. We can't get there by thinking. We can't get there by feeling. We can't get there by our will because all those things are very easily led astray. Like you said, you get it. You understand. My thoughts are shaped by my experiences. A lot of our feelings are shaped by traumas. Many of our feelings, are, you know, when we have, we, you know, they say, trust your heart. Well, your heart, that means, you know, feel your feelings. I'm not saying don't feel your feelings, don't honor your feelings, but don't trust in your feelings <laughs> because a lot of them come from uh, trauma. A lot of our feelings are, are based on trauma and our will is... Our will, we, we will for sinful things. In other words, things that are outside the realm of what we were created for, right? I know I've been there wanting things that really aren't for me. Um, and sometimes God gives me those things. <laughs> and, then I, and then I turn around and I'm like, wow, I really didn't want that. But I guess I had to, touch, I had to my dad always says, you know, I can tell you not to touch the stove top, but until you touch it, you won't know. So sometimes we got to hurt ourselves. We got to go astray in order to come back home. I know I have. I know I have. And so that, that has been a byproduct of trusting my thoughts, right? The things I see other people do. Recently, someone, uh, if you guys got a chance to see it, I posted a, uh, a documentary a young man did on me. Uh, and he, he posted it on uh, YouTube. It's called The Rise and Fall of, of Elliot, Elliot Hulse. Um, and in it, I could see. I could see various points in which I, you know, it, it was great. I'm happy that he did that for me because I was able to watch myself objectively. And I saw where when I was in my quote unquote king phase, right? He pointed out that there was a phase where Elliot, you know, I was wearing sunglasses. I started wearing earrings. I was in my king phase. You know what I was doing? I was watching what the popular YouTubers were doing. I, you know, I, prior to that, I never watched what anybody did on YouTube. I didn't know what anybody was doing on YouTube. I wasn't a part of the quote unquote community because I just made videos and went home. Um, but then, you know, that was like when Ty Lopez got popular and a couple of other guys. And they were all about showing the flashiness of their lifestyle. And it worked for them, right? So I figured, you know, I'm kind of, I'm running dry with answering questions, um, which is a totally different story. You know, of course I'm here back with you. I was like, but I, I sense that I should keep creating content. Let me see what other guys are doing. What's working for them. And it just, it didn't, of course it didn't come across right <laughs> because it wasn't right. <laughs> it didn't feel right. It didn't, I, I, there was some part of me that sensed it wasn't right and it didn't come across right. Because it was, it was me listening to what my thoughts were saying based on what I was seeing. One of the things he talks about in The Dark Night of the Soul, St. John of the Cross, is that we have to purgate our senses. And that means, like, Haran, if you're looking for what you need to be doing, right, you know, what your calling is, the worst thing you could do is look at what other people's calling is. And it's so easy. Like, you talk about boxing. Now, I don't know what your relationship is to boxing but you know mike tyson just made a boxing comeback right um there were a bunch of strong men that were doing boxing like boxing was a cool new thing i think mike uh uh who's that big black bodybuilder that's in the, on youtube all right wait, I, I can't believe i'm drawing a blank right now mike rashid you know he was doing boxing and stuff and so very easy to be like, wow, look at what these guys are doing. It's really cool. Maybe I need to go do that. But there's no discernment. There's pure thought matter, right? There's no truth in it. So what he, what he recommends is, and not even he recommends, but he says that you'll be tossed into it. This is why he calls it the dark night of the soul. You'll be tossed into a place of uh, what he calls aridity, arid, dryness. 
And instead of resisting dryness, he says, you got to sit in the dryness, almost like where I told uh, um, Jonathan, sorry. Almost like how I told Jonathan to, to, be with the bo- to be with the boredom. What he's saying, he called it ar- uh, aridity, the aridness, meaning that uh, be okay that you don't have sensual insight as to what to do. He says that's a good thing. It's a good thing when you're not being spawned on by your thoughts and by your feelings and your will. And I, that's a confusing place to be. I know what that feels like where it's like, I don't want anything. I don't feel anything. I'm not thinking about anything. Like you're clueless. He says, allow yourself to be in that cluelessness. I've said this to you guys before. Allow yourself not to know. Allow yourself not to know. Because when you, when you can't sit in that not knowing, there's no space for the spirit to speak to you. Think about, think about the spirit is, a, is, is pure. But then the thoughts, you know, the, the soul is thoughts, feelings, will. If the thoughts and the feelings and the will are all tumultuous, right? Distracted. The pure spirit can't make its way through. It's, it's blocked. You block the spirit. So he says, it is a blessing to be arid, to be dry, <laughs> to not know. He says, and only then can the spirit begin to transform you. And so, you know, part of my answer is that is be okay not knowing and and what's even what's even more challenging is to be okay not knowing while there's temptation right so like you're sitting at work you're bored and you start thinking about being a boxer right that's temptation that's temptation that is what it does is it removes you from where you are so that's my next the next half of my uh response here is when I say revelation, and, and you know, this is not, this is not biblical. This is not spiritual. This is, this is e Hulse doctrine. This is from the book of Hulse, right? I made this up. Um, revelation, a lot of times comes in the form of opening your eyes, opening your eyes, looking at where you are and making the best of it because the path, you're always on a path. You're always on a path. Every, even if you wake up in the first thing in the morning, you smoke a joint, you play video games, and you eat junk food all day. You're on a path. You're on a path. You can't start anywhere else. <laughs> you can't start anywhere else. And one of the things that I've confused myself about and I've gotten in trouble about is being somewhere and then trying to get somewhere else without acknowledging where I am. What am I going to do? How do you do that? Right? We got two feet on the ground. The only way to get from here to there in reality is to take that next step right where you are and then where you are and then where you are. And then keep taking those, keep, keep taking those steps, even if you don't know where it leads. But you get up and you do something. One of my dad's favorite lines is get up every day and do something. But here, you gotta, it's got to be something productive, right? Get up and every, every day and do something productive because if we allow our imaginations to carry us away, This is a term from Iron John. He says, then you become a high flyer or a fly boy. (laughs) You don't want to be a fly boy. A fly boy lives in his imagination and he daydreams about where he's going to be. And he thinks he can get there by growing wings. I'm going to fly away. I'm going to fly away from where I am. I'm going to land in this new place (laughs) in your own mind. (laughs) And there happens. So, Haran, you know, you got it. First of all, you got a job. You say, I made the dream at work. Well, you got work. You got work. Well, the first place to begin is to dominate the work that you do. Are you doing the work that you do to the best degree? Now, if you're daydreaming, you're probably, you're probably not, <laughs> right? If you're daydreaming at the job that you're at. You're probably not doing the best that you can. Here's another one. Uh, this is a metaphor from King David in the Psalms where he says, um, something to the degree of allowing my cup to fill up so that it can spill over. Well, you got to, you got to fill your place. This also comes from uh, the book, the science of getting rich. It's a new agey kind of book. It was written in like 1918, new agey kind of occult knowledge book. So beware, but it is based on some truth. And he says, 
that if you want more, you got to fill up where you're at right now to get there. You can't, and this is, a, this is biblical though also, you know, um, you got, if you are, if you can't be trusted with little, God ain't going to give you much. <laughs> if you're not trusted with the little that he gives you where you're at right now, what you have, your current surroundings, he ain't just going to give you more. He's like, look, you're not, you know, uh, Jordan Peterson says, make your bed. You didn't even make your bed today, <laughs> right? You're not even taking care of what you got. You're not taking care of what you got. How do you expect to have more added to you? This idea of a calling, you know, in, uh, in, in Catholicism, they call it vocation. What is, the, what is your vocation? There's a vocation. You're called to a vocation. And it was interesting when I started reading about that, you know, of course they talk about voca the vocations in terms of becoming a priest or something like that. But I continued reading, and this was just some, where did I, I don't know where I found this, but this was a PDF that I downloaded some time ago. There was the vocation of being a father. And I, I picked that one up, I downloaded it. And the entire thing was about being present with your family and your responsibilities as a father. Not, uh, you know, high-flying dreams, but very practical things. Are you being practical with what you've got? Are you taking care of your surroundings? That's really my question for you. Haran, I know that you're here, and I know you, you uh, unmuted yourself. So share with me, where are you with that? What does it, how does that sound to you? Does that make sense, or is there more? No, I think, uh, thanks again for, for the, your comments, man. I, I think that you hit it on the nail on your head when you said uh, you can't start anywhere else. I think that really hit me because you're right. You can, you can <laughs> that flyboy analogy as well, I was kind of laughing because it's just, <laughs> it's exactly what you said. You know, you can, you can say what you want to do. You can think about what you want to do. But at the end of the day, to get there, you have to look at where you are now, what your resources are around you, what your skills, your knowledge, your current situation is. And you just have to really internally analyze that. Um, I think I've probably got a bit of work to do on myself on this, this thoughts piece. Because, you know, you said right at the start, don't believe your thoughts all the time. And I have to just get somewhere with that maybe it's going back to the stillness that you said but I need to get somewhere where I get a thought and I'm okay with just letting that go I don't need to act on it um so I think that's the work I need to do on myself right now yeah yeah acknowledge it but then let it go and look man they'll stop coming they'll stop haunting you when you stop acknowledging them because I have an active mind also and it's gotten me into a lot of trouble because every thought every whim you know I'm chasing like chasing rabbits <laughs> But as I've, you know, I'm listening to this book, Dark Knight of Soul, and I see aspects of myself in very, in, I don't want to say more advanced. It is a little bit more advanced, but I'm a little bit further down the path than, and I still got a lot of work to do. But one of the things he says is that when you, when you stop having those incessant thoughts, you know you're sort of on the way. When you can just rest, when you can just stop. And here's the thing. Uh, what he what he makes clear is that the spirit is very active the spirit world is very 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 active <laughs> even though we can't see it we don't feel it we don't sense it your spirit is very active with guiding you on your path uh so when you don't have those thoughts or when you let those thoughts just pass and they and they stop coming and you start feeling arid you start feeling dry Rather than worrying about it, because I used to worry, I'd be like, wow, I used to think I'm lazy now. I'm like, wow, I'm lazy. Or I would say, I have no motivation. You know, there's, and you know, I'm, I'm at a stage in my life where I've just learned how to be okay with no motivation. I have no motivation anymore. <laughs> as strange as that sounds. And it is the most freeing thing ever. I'm so grateful that I don't have any motivation anymore. And I don't, I'm not saying don't strive for your safety and security, but this need for novelty, this need for something new, this need to start something, um, starts to reside, starts to, uh, res reside. And it starts, it begins to remind me of 
living the life of a monk, right? These monks, they take a vow of poverty. They do nothing but allow themselves to be, <laughs> right? And I think when we just allow ourselves to be, in fact, I know this, this is, comes from my dad's wisdom, my father's wisdom. My dad has been, my dad has been fixing cars since he was like 17 years old. He's going to be 70 next year. From 17 to 70, he's been fixing cars, never complained a day in his life about it. Never complains. It's the weirdest thing. But because my dad didn't grow up with all the sensual gratification and distractions that we grew up in. My dad grew up in the jungle. Right? He, didn't, he didn't wear shoes until he was like 15 years old and came to America, you know? Um, so there wasn't all, there was no ambition and ambition, ambition is a, is a, can be a vice. So my dad knew what he needed to do. He needed to put food on the table. He knew how to work. So he, he got a job and he started working. And this is what my dad says today as, at a, as a 70 year old man, right? <laughs> and my dad's funny, man. He'll just sit there sometimes and he'll marvel. He'll, he'll just marvel. He'll just say, Wow. I've had the best life ever. My life is so amazing. And I don't know how I got here. I have no idea. This is what my dad was like. I have no idea how I got here. But I look around, my children, my grandchildren, my wife, my home. He's still working to this day. And he says, I didn't do anything. This is what he tells me. <laughs> He's like, I didn't do anything. My dad never had, he almost seemed like, my dad creates a lot of things. So he has creative ambitions. He, he like, you know, he, he likes to like build things around the house. Like he builds with wood and he builds gardens and stuff like that. But not in the same, he doesn't have the same kind of ambitions that like our generation does where, you know, we want to, you know, most of our ambitions are out of pride. I want to be seen. I want to be seen. I want to be this kind of special person. We want to be special, right? We grew up in snowflake in a snowflake world where everyone is a snowflake. Everybody's special or they have to put on like they're special. That's what having an Instagram account is, right? It's like, hey, come look at my specialness, <laughs> right? My dad never had that. So he, that, that type of ambition just never existed in him. And he says this, this is his secret to it. And I said it before and I'll say it again. Get up every day, do what's in front of you. That's what he says. Just get up every day, do what's in front of you, and everything will be okay. So that's it, man. That's my, that's my advice for you there, buddy. Very good. Yeah. Our, our ambitions are so out of order. They're so disordered sometimes. And it's so hard for me to sit here, because I understand that in a way, I'm kind of an icon to a lot of you guys. And it's like, well, look at Elliot. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Easy for you to say, Elliot. Look at you and look what happened. I didn't do this. And when I look back and I think about it, I had all kinds of disordered ambitions that caused me to make all kinds of ridiculous mistakes. But the real successes in my life, I didn't really do. Becoming a strong man, right? That was like, you know, this later half of my life. Even, even my wife and my family, like I didn't do it. It was just what was in front of me, right? This woman, this girl was in front of me. So I just kept doing her. <laughs> I kept doing her till we had all these daughters. Um, with straw man, it showed itself to me. I just saw it one day and I went and did it. And it, and it was just the right thing to do. YouTube, you know, when I first started making YouTube videos, I didn't like making YouTube videos. I was like, what am I doing? Like I'd make a video once a week or whatever. And it wasn't until I started answering questions, which again, I don't do anything when I answer questions. You guys do it and I just, re I just respond. I'm actually just responding to what the world gives me. So if I had to say for me, how I got where I am, there's two things. Lifting is just what was in front of me and I'm good at it. And answering questions. That's really what I am. I'm a lifter that answers, that answers questions. And if you really boil, boil it down to it, it's super simple. Now, God was the one that decided that there would be a million subscribers, right? In fact, I remember when my channel started growing and uh, YouTube partners started reaching out to me. You know, there was a guy who became my like, YouTube manager. And uh, he was kind of, he was a little astonished by me. He was a little taken back by me because he was like, so what is, what's your goal with your channel? He wanted to know. 
I was like, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to keep making answering questions. I don't know. He's like, yeah, but you're so close to a million subscribers. Your goal has to get to that million subscribers. And he was real excited about it. He was trying to push me for it. And I was like, all right, I didn't do it. I, I'm not really, I'm not trying to make that happen. But if it happens, then that's okay. Right? If that happens, then fine. In fact, when I, when I reached a million subscribers, right? And I'm just relating to this to you guys so that you, it doesn't look like oh, Elliot, it's Elliot's ambition that got him where he is. When I got to a million subscribers, I all, that was about the time when I almost, I basically quit making YouTube videos, right? <laughs> and my partners were like, you got to make a video about it. You got to go back. You got to, you have to make a video announcing your million subscribers. And I was like, really? Do I have to do that? No, they didn't want to. Right? Because I didn't feel like I did anything. I really didn't. I didn't do anything. This is just the way God blessed me. It's been my path. But don't try to make my path your path. Don't try to make anybody's path your path. Your path will feel right for you. It will be right for you. Like I said, my dad fixed cars from 17 to 70. Never complained a day in life because it's the right path for him. He never once said, well, I should be something else, have something else, go somewhere else. My dad is such an arrogant bastard that like he doesn't even keep, he's gotten fired and stuff and, uh, he, and then he's gotten promoted and stuff. And he just allows himself to be himself and everything seems to unfold perfectly for him because he doesn't judge, he doesn't reach, he doesn't have any ambition. <laughs> isn't that crazy? Isn't that, we're, isn't that weird? Let me take another sip. I'm going to get to Raphael's question. The spirit has no ambition. Spirit has no ambition. Because what? When we talk about becoming a king, being, it's all about being, right? There's thinking, there's feeling, there's doing, but then there's being. And that's why that's so mystical. That's why it's so mystical. Being? What do you mean being? I'm not going to do anything? No. I, you know, I'm not thinking about anything? No. I mean, I'm not going by my feelings? No. The king doesn't do anything. <laughs> the king just is. They say, Robert Moore says, though, that when a king is on his throne, the kingdom develops around him. So by, by just being you, everything that you need manifests around you. It all just shows up to, it's like you become a magnet. When you allow yourself to be, right? In every, in, when I say you allow yourself to be, I'm not talking about just sitting down doing nothing. I mean, just literally doing what's in front of you. because That's what being is. Being is do what's in front of you. When you just do what's in front of you, everything that you need is added to you, right? This is why in the Bible, uh, it, I think Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. That's what it means. Seek for, first the kingdom of God. That means relate to the father, right? The king. Relate to the king and all things will be added to you. Not a sexy answer. Not, not, this is not a carnal answer. This is not a sensual, sexy answer. <laughs> and, and, I, and, you know, an old version of me would have wanted to give you something more uh, sexy. What is it, it? But all that, again, is neediness. It's reaching. It's being dazzled with the delightful. Right? We got to set all that, si all that stuff aside, man. Set it all aside. It's effeminacy. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation Coaching Students, where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. And if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day, to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.